In the spirit of reconciliation, I'd like to acknowledge the original custodians of the land and hope that we can soon have a bipartisan referendum to recognise their elders past, present and future in Australia's constitution. I'd also like to welcome everybody here. Welcome to the world's most livable city. <laughs> oh, it's a big thing. <laughs> welcome to a community where the pursuit of the obtainable truth is cherished. And welcome to the state of Victoria, where Australian exceptionalism is not just celebrated in sport, but in science. We meet at a tipping point in a time of unprecedented change. Science is under attack for perceived political or commercial gain. We confront Orwellian concepts such as alternate facts, formerly dismissed as propaganda, and the Oxford Dictionary's word of the year for 2016, post-truth. <laughs> yes, well, you may laugh. An adjective defined as relating to or denoting circumstances in which objective facts are less influential in shaping public opinion than appeals to emotion and personal belief. Put simply, we live in dangerous times when the culture of reason, intellectual rigor and integrity can be dismissed by prejudice and social media can be used as an echo chamber whipping up anxiety and fear. This is why today's symposium is important. It reasserts the primacy of science, discovery and innovation for advances in health and well-being. We are striving for enlightenment and must advocate its importance for their leadership. In this cause, I'd like to acknowledge Professor Doug Hilton, Professor David Vaux, Professor Susan Corey, Professor Andreas Strasser, Professor Doug Wang, Professor, Associate Professor Jerome Lesson, Professor Andrew Roberts, Dr. Wayne Fairburn from Genetech, Dr. Saul Rosenberg for AbbVie, Dr. Louis Strout from the National Cancer Institute of the USA, and Professor Anne Kelso from the National Health and Medical Research Council of Australia. And on behalf of the Victorian Government, and particularly Premier Dan Andrews, and the Minister for Small Business Innovation and Trade, Philip Deladakis, I'm delighted to be here in this role to open the symposium, and particularly to be here at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute, uh, because we really want to acknowledge the achievements that they've done in cell death from research from discoveries to drugs. And uh, as Doug has uh, explained, this is a 30-year journey, and this is the time that needs to be invested, the rigor that needs to be applied, and it goes to the credit of everybody who's been part of this project. At the heart of the success of the Walter and Eliza Hall Cell Death Research Program is collaboration, which we celebrate in this symposium. The Walter and Eliza Hall Institute has played a key role in the health of Victorians for more than 100 years, and its dedicated researchers have changed the lives of so many people, not just in Melbourne or Victoria or Australia, but internationally as well. Today marks three decades of collaboration that have underpinned the development of this new anti-cancer treatment. We now have a drug that can stop cancer cells' survival, described as a lethal arrow. The Institute's great minds, in collaboration with many others from around the world, has given leukaemia patients in Australia, the United States, and the European Union, for whom there was no other available treatment options, hope and a chance to live. And we all know the significance that that means if you're suffering from cancer. So when we look at what also has happened, I want to uh, talk about the opportunity to commend the Institute and its researchers. Uh, uh, Venaclax began its development when the BCL2 protein that helps cancer cells survive was discovered by this Institute in 1988. That's a remarkable breakthrough. And since then, more than 100 researchers from the Institute have worked with leading scientists, clinicians, and entrepreneurs from Melbourne and internationally to bring this treatment to market. The Walter and Eliza Hall Institute partnered with scientists from the US pharmaceutical companies, AbbVie, and Genetech to discover and develop this new drug. 
and the first clinical, clini clinical trials started in Melbourne at the Institute's Victorian Comprehensive Cancer Centre partner, the Royal Melbourne Hospital, and the Peter McCallum Clinic. Australian haematologists led these trials. And we just want to uh, emphasise the collaborative nature of what we're trying to do. As Doug has said, this has been a, uh, an ecosystem that's evolved over generations in Melbourne and has enjoyed bipartisan support politically over a long period of time. So the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute is one of 10 leading organisations that have come together to form the Victorian Comprehensive Cancer Partnership, the billion dollar jewel in Australia's medical research crown. So we now have our best and brightest working together in one location, sharing knowledge and resources, so we can drive the next generation of cancer discoveries here in Victoria. Through the Victorian Comprehensive Cancer Centre, we can accelerate discoveries into clinical practice to ensure patients receive the best care and treatment sooner. This will give 130,000 Australians diagnosed with cancer every year the best chance of survival, treatment and care. And this drug is a shining example of why Victoria is a world leader in health and medical research and in life sciences. We are home to more than 10 major medical research institutions, 10 major teaching hospitals, nine universities, and 180 biotech companies, all within close proximity, important for that collaboration. A vibrant biotechnology sector employs more than 20,000 people, generates global revenues of more than $10 billion, and has a combined market capitalization of $59 billion. The Victorian government has invested $1.8 billion into life sciences over the past 15 years to drive discovery and leadership, because that's what it needs and that's what it takes. So we want you to know that we support you, we're backing you, and uh, we are committed to maintaining and improving Victoria's position as a world leading centre for medical research. And we're also looking at how we combine and collaborate across the world. I happened to hear Barack Obama give his last State of the Union address when he made the moonshot quest, the attempt to cure cancer. And he put Joe Biden, the vice president in charge of mission control, as he called it. And uh, I wrote an article saying that Victoria should look to partner because we're about to open the Victorian Comprehensive Cancer Centre and Premier Dan Andrews went to Boston and uh, through various uh, contacts and connections made the commitment to, to America and made the invitation and Joe Biden came here. And uh, one of the key things that he remarked upon was that we now have an ability to share the data from 60,000 different patients and what that will do, the ability of our researchers to actually effectively mine that data, look at what can be done with it and how that will help future breakthroughs and, and uh, developments. And I got on the first plane that I could back to America, went to MD Anderson, the world's largest comprehensive cancer center, uh, went to uh, the US uh, National uh, Cancer Institute and a whole range of, of other leading uh, bodies through the US looking at how we can partner up as well. So these are the kind of collaborations that we're looking to do. And I think this is what is, goes so much to the credit of uh, uh, medical researchers, their willingness to actually collaborate and to try and work together. So it's great to have everybody here today and uh, to have the entrepreneurs here as well, to have the businesses, because we need to get everyone together to see how we actually can make these breakthroughs. It can only be done in collaboration. And uh, to that effect, the Victorian government launched Victoria's Health and Medical Research Strategy 2016 to 2020, and identifying the areas of excellence where we want to invest and further develop. We're supporting new and evolving fields of world-class research, such as precision medicine, health services research, and big data. And that's the point I'm making about the big data with America and the recognition that if we can actually mine this research, get the benefit from it, this will be of, uh, of international significance. Researchers from across the globe are coming to work here in Melbourne in fields including paediatrics, cancer and neuroscience, and we hope to attract more of the world's leaders. So the request I make is, please call me, okay, if you'll do that. Uh, we've combined 
the capabilities of two universities to produce a global scale venture, BioCurate, a new enterprise to accelerate the development of new medicines to treat a wide range of diseases. BioCurate will provide the skills and funding needed to increase the number, quality and rate of translation of new drugs discoveries. It is expected to generate about $360 million in activity, support new companies, increase investment and exports and create specialised jobs in the sector. This BioCurate model is just another example of the innovation expertise for which Victoria is famous. We've also invested $4 million in a world-class medicines manufacturing centre to help Victoria's pharmaceutical industry create new products, grow exports and develop skills. Led by Monash University, the new medicines manufacturing innovation centre is supported by global pharmaceuticals company GlaxoSmithKline. Through the centre, we are giving Victoria's medicines manufacturers access to specialist scientific capabilities to solve technical challenges and encourage investment in research and development, high-tech manufacturing, skills development and collaboration. So these are just a range of, of different propositions that we have in place. I'm also a member of the Science, Medical Research and Technology panel and what we're trying to do there is to uh, to bring together people with the leadership and excellence and the connections to business so that we can get more capital in and we can translate faster from bench top to business. So that's what we're trying to do. And uh, we're, we're the home of more than 22 pharmaceutical manufacturers and including CSL, I'm the member for Broadmeadows and CSL is in my electorate. So we have the Brains Trust, if you like, in and around Melbourne in this hub around the University of Melbourne and our leading uh, independent medical research centres such as uh, the Walter and Eliza Hall and the others that are named uh, in connection of our Nobel Prize winners. And then we have the great southern hub around Monash University and CSIRO there as well. So this is the system that we've been able to create, as I say, over generations that has been important and has attracted you here which is a fantastic result. You now know your way. If there's a, a difference that you can make to improving the health uh, for anybody from uh, the people of Melbourne, Victoria and Australia and internationally, we want you to collaborate. You know your way here. Give me a call when you've got your breakthrough or if you just want to stay, give me a ring. That's okay. And the one thing that I do ask of you is really what's probably most important right now is to back yourself in the pursuit of the obtainable truth and keep striving for enlightenment. <laughs>